Hi there! In today's lesson we will continue with the project we started last time. This is part 2 in a 4 part lesson. In part 2 we continue exploring different ways to process string variables with string functions and string procedures. We already covered length and concat in the previous lesson. In this lesson we will cover uppercase and lowercase and trim. And in the next two lessons we will also look at copy, pass, insert and string replace. I will show you how to also use the input box function to get input from a user that can also be stored in a string variable. Like I said, these functions will be explained in a series of tutorials, so we will only do a few string functions every time. But let me first show you how string functions work in our project. This is the new project we started last time. We coded this button to display a pangram that we use as the default phrase. We use the length and the concat string functions to display two messages in these two panels. Today we will write code for the uppercase, lowercase and trim buttons. The uppercase button must format the phrase to uppercase characters, but it also refreshes these outputs for the length and the message panels. We display a new message that reads, you formatted the phrase to uppercase letters. The lowercase button must format the phrase to lowercase and refresh the messages again, like this. The default phrase has 45 letters, but that includes a space here in the front and another space at the back of the phrase. We must write code for the trim button to remove the leading and trailing spaces, like this. The length changed now from 45 to 43 characters. And this message also changed. In the next two lessons, we will write code for the copy, insert and string replace buttons. You already learned how to use the uppercase, lowercase and the copy function in unit 8.10, but I'll show it again in this series. The copy button will ask the user to provide the value to be copied. This is done with an input dialog box that is also created with a function. The default value is dark, but the user can type any word that already exists in the phrase. I will type lazy and click OK. This changed the length to 43 now. And this message shows what word was copied in quotation marks. The insert button pops up another input box that prompts the user for the word that must be inserted. In my code, I programmed that the insert must squeeze the input in before the word fox. So I must first use the pass function to determine the position before I insert the new value. Here, the default value in the input box is slide. I will leave it like that and click OK. Our new phrase now includes the word sly between brown and fox. These two outputs also changed. The length is now 47 and here we see that the new word was squeezed in at position 17 of the phrase. The string replace button pops up another input box to get the word the user wants to replace. The word dark is the default. I will leave it like that and click OK. Then a second input box asks the user to enter the replacement value. The word hawk is given by default. But I will change it to elephant and click OK. Dark is now replaced with elephant. And these two inputs were also refreshed. Like I said the last time, you must create the user interface yourself by looking at mine. I only go through the code with you, but I also provide all the projects we use in these tutorials as downloads. Just go over to patreon.com slash learndelphi and search for the unit. If a download is available for a tutorial, you will find it at the bottom of the lesson. Download the zip and extract the files to a location of your choice. You will find the project in the starter folder that you can use to do the project with me. The solution folder contains the same project, but it is how your solution should work at the end of the tutorial. If you do run into problems, you can compare your code with the solution. And please consider becoming a Patron on Patreon. If you are already a Patron, thank you for your support. Ok, let's jump into the project. This is my project in design time. Like I said, you must observe how I created the user interface and create it yourself. For example, look here at the left of the structure panel for the types of components and the names I assigned to them. You can also look here at the right hand side of the IDE in the project explorer to see how I named my project in unit files. Let's start by running the project. 
click the display pengram button. If you programmed this button last time, you will see the phrase that we retrieved from a constant we declared. We also show the length of the phrase here in this panel, and another message here in this panel. Click the other buttons. Nothing happens. We will write code today for these three buttons. Click the close button here in the corner of the form. With your project back in design time, double click the uppercase button. You are now in the buttons event procedure for the on click event. Make space above the begin statement and put your cursor in the blank line. I will declare two variables, a string variable called str phrase to store the default phrase and the byte to store the length of the phrase. I named it PTE letter count. You will remember we also declared these two variables last time in the click event handler of BTN display pangram. In a future lesson, you will learn how to share values in variables between procedures. Go between the begin and end statements and type these lines of code. Here, I assign the value in the text property of edt phrase to the string variable named str phrase. Then in this line, I read the value I just saved in the string variable named str phrase and convert it to uppercase letters. The uppercase function is used to return the characters in the string variable to uppercase letters. The uppercase function takes a string as input between the two brackets. Here in red letters, I show the uppercase function. Here we pass a string named str phrase as an argument to the uppercase function's input parameter. Now let's assume the value in the string variable is my name, Gerard, and let's assume the casing of the letters were mixed up like there on the screen. The uppercase function will now go do its work in the background, and that is to convert all the characters in the string to uppercase characters. When it is done, it assigns the result to a string data type. So on this line, I take the phrase I got here from the edit and pass it to an argument to the uppercase function's input parameter. The result is assigned back to the text property of edt phrase. Notice what we do here. On this line, we first retrieve the current text in the edit and save it in the variable. Then, on this line, we take the value we saved in the previous line and assign it back to the same edit, so the edit can display a new uppercase phrase. I did explain this line last time. We display the length of the phrase in the caption of the panel we named PNL length. And on this line, we display a message that reads, You formatted the text to uppercase letters. Ok, now let's go do the same with the lowercase button. Click here on the design tab. Double click BT in lowercase. Make space above the begin statement. And declare these two variables. Notice, we declare these two variables again, just like we did here. That is because the variables we declared in other procedures are not visible to the code in this procedure. So for now, we have to declare the variables again. But like I said, we will learn how to share values in variables between procedures in a future lesson. Now we can just copy the code between the begin and end statements of the uppercase button's click event procedure. Paste the code here between the begin and end statement of the lowercase button. Put your cursor in the word uppercase and remove upper. Now type LO and press your control key and your spacebar together. In this list, we see the name of the lowercase function. It is a function, it has a string input parameter, and it also returns a string result. Press enter on your keyboard to auto type the name of the function. Notice the highlighted brackets indicating where the function's parameter list opens as well as its corresponding closing bracket. The lowercase function is used to return the characters in the string variable to lowercase letters. The lowercase function also takes a string as input between the two brackets. Here in red letters, I show the lowercase function. Here we pass a string named str phrase as an argument to the function's input parameter. And if the casing of the letters in my name were mixed up like you see there on the screen, the lowercase function will now go do its work in the background, and that is to convert all the characters in the string to lowercase characters. When it has a result, it assigns it to a string data type. So on this line, I take the phrase I got here from the edit, and pass it as an argument to the lowercase function's input parameter. 
The result is then assigned back to the text property of edit phrase. Here we do the same that we did for uppercase. On this line, we first retrieve the current text in the edit and save it in a variable. Then on this line, we take the value we saved in the previous line and assign it back to the same edit so that it can display a new lowercase phrase. Like with all the buttons, we display the length of the phrase in the caption of the panel we named PNL length in this line. And here we want to display a phrase that reads, you formatted the text to lowercase letters. Change uppercase to lowercase in this message. Ok, now let's click the run button. Click display pangram to display the output. And make sure you get the same results as me. Now click the uppercase button. And also test lowercase. Ah, so far so good. Now let's also do the trim button. Click here on the design tab. Double click BTN trim. Last time we worked on this project, we assigned the default phrase to a constant called pangram. Remember we included the leading and the trailing space in the literal string. Whether it is our default phrase or a custom phrase typed by the user, the trim button must remove leading and trailing spaces from the phrase. So let's declare variables for the trim buttons on click event. Make space above the begin statement. Go and copy these two variable declarations from the uppercase button's click event handler. And paste it above the begin statement in the trim button's procedure. Later we will learn how to share values in variables between procedures. Now we can also copy the code between the begin and end statements of the uppercase button's click event procedure. Paste the code here between the begin and end statements of the trim button. Put your cursor behind the word uppercase and remove it. Now type TRI and press your control key and spacebar together. In this list we see the name of the trim function. It's a function, it has a string input parameter and it also returns a string result. Use your down arrow key to move the focus. Here we see two other trim functions, namely trim left and trim right. They are used in the same way as the trim function, except that trim left removes only leading spaces, while trim right removes spaces from the back of a string. Make sure you highlight the trim function, then press enter on your keyboard to auto-type the name of the function. Notice the highlighted brackets indicating where the function's parameter list opens as well as the corresponding closing bracket. The trim function is used to remove the space at the beginning and at the end of a string. The trim function takes a string as input between the two brackets. Here in red letters I show the trim function. We pass a string named str phrase as an argument to the string function's input parameter. If the value in the string variable is my name, Gerard, with a space in the front and back, the trim function will now go do its work in the background, and that is to remove the leading and trailing spaces from my name. When it is done, it assigns the result to a string. So in this line, I take the phrase I got here from the edit and pass it as an argument to the trim function's input parameter. The result is then assigned back to the text property of edit phrase. Here we do the same we did for the uppercase and lowercase buttons. Like with the other buttons, we display the length of the phrase in the caption of a panel we named PNL length. Ok, you must now type the following code on this line. Here, we assign the trim text in EDT phrase back to the string variable called str phrase. We do that before using the length function on the next line, because we must count the characters in the trim phrase, which will now be two characters shorter. And here we want to change the message to read, you removed slash trimmed leading and trailing spaces. Let's click the run button to test our code. Click display pangram to display the output and make sure you get the same results as me. Now click the uppercase button, click lowercase. While you are looking at the results for these three buttons, also notice that the length of the phrase for all three buttons is 45 letters. That includes the space in the front and the space in the back that we included in the phrase when we made it a constant. Now, when you click on the trim button, the spaces are removed. 
and the length is now 43 letters. That is two less than before because Trim removed the two spaces. We will use this project again next time, so save your work. And please like and subscribe and share my lessons with friends and family on social media. Next time we will continue exploring string variables in part 3. See you in the next lesson. Thank <laughs> you.